All right, let's do it. We're back with another Excel speedrun with no mouse. This time we're doing stage eight, case two from the FMWC 2021 season. This case is called Cats and Dogs and it's built as an introductory financial modeling exercise where we do evaluation of a pet food manufacturer. So we start off by adding our dates. In this case, these are months. Um, and these come from the assumptions tab, which contain all of the case assumptions. And we use a EO month formula to get to the month end. I also hit everything to the right of column O. Uh, this way when we're navigating, we don't end up at the very end of Excel. I believe that's column XFD. Uh, we added a row for the number of days in each period. This is going to be important later for our balance sheet items. Uh, next is our sales schedule, which is segmented into two buckets. Uh, you can see here the first bucket. This is the sales units. That's the first uh, segment. In this section, we're going to bring in the average 2021 monthly sales, as so. Um, and then we'll uh, bring in the 3% increase for January 2022. Both of these are from the case assumptions. Okay, you can see that I'm doing that here. In column D, I'll multiply the average sales and one plus the percentage increase to get the January 2022 number. Um, and for the remaining months in 2022, we're gonna use the same logic. Uh, we're gonna replace the 3% increase with a 0.5% monthly increase, also from the case assumption. And we're going to copy and paste February all the way to the right to get to our monthly sales numbers. We'll then copy and paste the entire section below as we're going to move on to our second segment. Now, you've, if you've been watching the formula bar, you'll notice that I reference sheet A a lot here. Basically, I'm pulling from a pre-populated assumptions tab included with the case. At the very start of the case, I quickly renamed the tab to the letter A using Alt to HOR. Sounds like whore, if you want to remember. Uh, so I don't have to type out the word assumptions every time or have to flip back and forth between sheets. So right now we're doing our second segment, sales dollars. Uh, I pulled in 2021 prices and used a 2022 increase of 5%, both from the case assumptions. And this is going to give us our 2022 prices. Uh, as revenue is units times price, we have what we need to get to sales dollars. Um, so after sales dollars uh, is direct costs. Um, I'm copying and pasting the sales dollars section down four times. And there are four categories here, materials, labor, packaging, and other. I labeled them, but you don't have to. Um, I'm gonna change the formulas here to refer to costs. For each of these, I'm gonna bring in unit costs from the case assumptions and multiply that by the number of units, which we already did up top in rows seven to 13. Uh, we just did materials. Right now I'm doing labor. Uh, and then we're gonna do packaging and then other, okay? And after that, we can move on to the next section, which is indirect costs. So right now I'm doing packaging and, and we're going to do other. Okay. So as we wrap this up, we we'll move to indirect costs and there are five categories here in this section is manufacturing, which the case just names as indirect cost. There's marketing, existing payroll, new payroll, and finally other. Um, marketing, existing payroll, and other, we are given as uh, 2021 numbers, which we'll bring in with a 3.5% cost increase uh, given via the case assumptions. Okay, once we have the formula down for manufacturing, which is the first one, we're just going to copy and paste right to fill out every month. And then we're going to copy and paste down to uh, get existing payroll and other. Uh, marketing costs are 3% of sales. The 3% is from the case assumptions. And we already have sales from before. Uh, I think this is row 17 to 24. <laughs> for, the, uh, for the new payroll, it's one higher every two months, starting in February. Uh, at a cost of 100k per year or uh, 8.3 per month and again this is from the case assumptions okay so we're going to multiply our uh, 100,000 divided by 12 times the number of new hires great so after indirect costs is our capex schedule and there are two types of capex here there's existing and new assets existing is fixed and intangible this is pretty simple 
For these, we have a start value, then some depreciation, then some ending value, which becomes your start value for the next month. Lather, rinse, repeat. Uh, our start value for our fixed assets is going to be five million, uh, and this is going to depreci be depreciated over 84 months. Um, this is all from the case assumptions. So we brought those in uh, right now. We're just going to calculate them across the uh, months. Our depreciation is five million divided by 84 times negative one. And that gets us to our ending value, and, and we'll copy and paste right to get the these values for every month. Intangible assets is the exact same logic. You're just going to do a copy and paste. Uh, we're just going to use different assumptions here. Uh, the start is going to be 100K, and we're going to amortize this over 120 periods. Again, both of these are from the assumptions. Uh, for new or replacement assets, same thing. We just have to add a line for additional assets, because these are new assets. And we're going to remember to depreciate off the total additions, not the starting balance. Uh, these are replacement assets, so you start with zero. Um, and then you add, uh, we add 100K per year, or 8.3K a month. And we're going to depreciate this over 60 months. Um, these values are given to us by the case assumptions. Okay, we're going to lock this in the column and drag this to the right. Copy, paste. Um, great, now we have our debt schedule. Now, this one is pretty simple as well. Just one loan, you've got a starting balance. Uh, you pay some interest and you pay some principal. Uh, and then you get your ending balance. So our starting balance is 11 million. Our interest is 4% a year, which we pay on a monthly basis. And our principal is on a 96 month term. Okay, um, you've got your ending balance, which becomes your starting balance for your next month. Lather, rinse, repeat. Don't forget, we've got to divide the 4% by 12, because um, the 4% re represents a annual interest rate, not a monthly one. <laughs> and don't forget that your ending balance does not include your interest. You're just subtracting your principal from the, the payment toward the principal from the starting balance. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we're finishing up our debt statement. Uh, what's the other part of this capital structure? It's That's equity. So our equity schedule is similar to our debt schedule. You've got a starting balance. That's given by the case. You make some money, which is your net income or retained earnings. Well, we don't know what that is yet, so we'll leave it blank. Um, our starting balance here is three and a half million. Um, and then you pay out some dividends. In this case, uh, the case gives you 65%. And we're going to pay this out quarterly. So I'm going to use the mod function here to only pay out on months divisible by three. But when we pay out, we pay out 65% of the entire quarter, not just that month. Um, okay, you see that here. And then your ending balance is going to be your starting balance plus your net income minus your dividends paid. And this becomes your starting balance for the next month. Lather, rinse, repeat. And again, we're missing net income, which comes from the income statement. So let's go to the top and make our income statement. And this is going to be pretty simple here. I'm going to type out the uh, categories out first, and then we're going to walk through it. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start with sales. We've got that in rows 36 to 42. So I'll just sum that up. And then from that, we'll subtract our COGS. Cost of goods sold. This is going to be our four direct cost categories that we did before, plus our indirect cost from manufacturing. Okay, and the difference here is gross profit. Um, we're going to copy and paste this all the way to the right and copy and paste some of the formulas down. From gross profit, we'll take out SGNA, which are all other indirect costs. That's going to be under our direct costs. That will give us our EBITDA. And then from that, we'll take out our interest, depreciation, and amortization, which I've abbreviated IDA for the speed run. Interest comes from the debt schedule. Depreciation and amortization come from our capex schedule, as you can see. These are the values in red. Um, we've done all of this already. Uh, we're just bringing that up to the top. Uh, now we're just going to take out the tax. We've got our EBT. We'll take out the tax to get our net income. This is going to be a tax rate of 27% given to us by the case. Okay. Um, and now we've got the income statement. Might as well do the balance sheet because we're going to need that for the case answers as well. 
I'll bring in the balance sheet items from the Assumptions tab along with their starting balances, like so. And we're going to format the uh, numbers from numbers to dollars. We'll split the balance sheet into two sides, like so. We're going to add cash to our asset side. Uh, we're going to add debt to our liabilities plus uh, equity side. And our debt is going to be straight from the uh, debt schedule. Uh, which we did before. That's below. And we'll take the ending balance. Okay. Uh, liabilities and equity is going to be everything summed up together. No change to share capital. Uh, retained earnings is going to be your starting balance of three and a half plus your net income from your equity schedule. That is blank for now. Once we complete the equity schedule, everything is going to update. Uh, we'll complete the beginning balance sheet by filling in cash, which is just a plug. Uh, of our liabilities plus equity minus all of our other assets. And now we're going to get to our working capital items. Uh, we don't need a working capital schedule. Instead, we're just going to do the items right here in the balance sheet. We're going to add our AR, inventory, and AP days from the assumptions tab. And now we're going to get the three. AP is a function of sales times AR days minus your days and your period. That's why we added the days and the period at the beginning. So we have it ready for uh, what we're doing right now. Okay. Once we have that, uh, inventory is going to be the exact same, but a function of, of COGS instead of sales. Just copy and paste down as COGS is one row below sales on our income statement. And AP is going to be a function of all costs, COGS plus SGNA. We're going to copy and paste here and change the reference to point to COGS and SGNA. Okay. Fixed and intangible assets come straight from our CapEx schedule. Fixed assets do include replacement assets. Okay, now we have our retained earnings and can finally complete our equity schedule. Let's add that to the bottom. Okay, okay so now we have that done. Uh, last step here is the valuation schedule. This is very, very easy. We're going to put that underneath the balance sheet. Um, the case wants us to use a multiplier on 12 month EBITDA to get to enterprise value. So let's do that. First, we'll grab the uh, 12 month EBITDA from our income statement, the sum of it. Then you we will bring in our multiplier of eight and a half times from our case assumption. So yeah, I'm blocking the view here, but if you take a look at the formula bar, you can see what's going on. Um, so we've got our enterprise value, we'll remove ending debt and add ending cash to get to our final valuation of cats and dogs. Um, and now, once we have our final valuation, we're going to solve the case questions. You can pause the video when I'm on this tab, the one with the blue headers, if you want to see the questions. So a big note here um, while we're answering this, we didn't do a cash flow statement. Of course, it's always best practice to do so. But this case is entirely solvable without creating one. And that's exactly what we're doing here. You can also see that I have a timer on the answer sheet, but it doesn't update every second. I've set this to only update once the answer sheet is updated. Otherwise, Excel is going to be auto refreshing every second, and that's going to cause a lot of lag uh, for this recording. While I'm filling out the answer sheet, just want to do a plug in. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. Uh, if you have feedback, feel free to leave it in the comments. I do listen to feedback. One of the biggest pieces of feedback I received from my first video was that people didn't understand what was going on. That's basically why I'm providing commentary now. Okay. Uh, when the answer sheet is correctly filled out, the timer will automatically stop. A cash register sound will, cash register sound will play and a pop-up box will appear with the finished time. And once that happens, that'll conclude the speed run. And if you want to keep watching after that, I do end this video with a 30 second blooper reel. We're coming up, we're coming up on time, a little less than 10 seconds left. So uh, here we go. All right, 1432. I'm pretty happy with that. No usage of mouse. Very good.
Where did that come up? Runs dead. The hell? <laughs> 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 